Okay, uh, this is a quick look at uh, how we ground an object. In this case, it's going to be an electroscope uh, and what grounding means and uh, what moves and where it moves and um, what the result of that is. Okay, so here we are starting with the uh, electroscope. It's got a net positive charge. As you can see from the pictures, it's got positive charge built up throughout. Now, an electroscope is a, made up of a conductor, so this is all conductive. So that means that the electrons can easily travel through that particular material. There are lots of free electrons to uh, move from one side to another of the material. Uh, because the um, leaf here and this leaf here are both positively charged, what's happened is a force has caused the um, object to push apart. So when an electroscope, the leaves diverge, then we can tell that there is electricity nearby, some kind of electrical imbalance. We really can't tell whether it's positive or negative. Here we can see that it's positive. Okay, now uh, the next step, and if we're going to ground it, we're going to touch it with something. <clears throat> now it's a conductor, so really what we're doing is discharging by conduction, if you will. Um, we're going to try to get rid of that build up a positive charge uh, by bringing in a uh, charge from someplace else, and that other place is the ground. Um, now in this case, uh, it's positive charge on the electroscope, so we're going to need to bring in charge that will cancel that positive charge. We can't move the positive charge because that's protons. So it's not that we move the protons down the finger to the ground, it's that we're going to bring in uh, electrons to neutralize that charge. So here come the electrons. Okay, now we get to a point where enough electrons have come in from the ground that the imbalance in charge is gone and now the uh, electroscope is neutralized. So we've brought it back to a neutral, uh, no charge situation. Now, once you take your fingers away, um, the uh, charge is still, you know, is gone now once you take your finger away, whether you take your finger away or not. So now it's neutral. We have neutralized it by grounding. Uh, and that's the basic process. So when you ground something, you will touch it with some kind of conductor. That conductor will bring electrons either in from the ground or will allow electrons to travel to the ground. That will allow a balance to be reset and that will neutralize the electrical charge of the device. Okay, now this uh, video clip takes us through what happens when you charge by induction, uh, which is a multi-step process. Uh, first, we have a conductor, so to charge by induction, we're really looking at conductors. Uh, it's a metal sphere, so metal is conductor. Uh, the first step in the process is to have the neutral object here, the sphere, uh, and bring some kind of charge uh, toward it. Now, it's not touching it. That would just be charging by conduction. Uh, by bringing the negative rod, in this case, close to the sphere, we cause a polarization of the charges. The electrons uh, in the metal are pushed away and spend a lot more time over here toward the right hand side, uh, which causes a negative charge to build up, a positive charge to build up over here on the left hand side. Uh, so we've separated the charges, but we haven't transferred. If we just touch it, uh, touch the rod to the metal, then we are going to charge it, but we're going to charge it by conduction, not induction. Okay, now that we've got this polarized uh, situation set up, our next step is to bring in the grounding element. And again, a ground just means a place where we can provide either electrons to come in or electrons to go out to some other object. The Earth being the biggest object around, that's a great place to get electrons from or to send electrons to. Now in this case, since we have a negative rod over here, these electrons are going to be pushed, likes repel, they're going to want to get away from those negative charges. So they're going to go down the hand uh, toward the ground and once we take the ground away you'll see that we're left with a net positive charge on the sphere. Now it's a metal sphere so those charges are not going to stay there if we take the rod away. Uh, they're going to move 
So the final step is we take the rod away uh, and once we do that the charges are going to naturally try to get away from each other so they're going to set up on the surface of the uh, object, in this case the metal object. Uh, any conductor the charges will tend to stay only on the surface, they will not go inside the conductor. Now that entire process has resulted in the loss of the negative charged electrons leaving positive charge behind. We didn't again move protons, we just left, got rid of electrons to leave the positive charges behind. Uh, now we started with a negative rod and we ended up with a positive sphere. Uh, that's the way it always happens in induction. We don't actually touch anything, we don't actually transfer anything from the charged object, uh, but uh, we use the ground to bring in electrons or send them out and then uh, that allows us to create the opposite charge. So if you charge by conduction you always get the same type of charge as you started with. If you charge by induction you'll always get the opposite type of charge that you started with. Okay this time we're going to look at induction instead of using the ground we're going to use a second item to take the charge away. So you have two conducting spheres touching. Uh, since they are touching there is a path for electrons to move from one object to the other. Uh, so we're going to bring in a negatively charged balloon. Now that's going to cause the electrons from this sphere, some of them anyway, to be pushed to the right, leaving behind an imbalance, a positive charge on the left sphere and a negative imbalance on the right. Uh, that's only, we haven't transferred any electrons to the balloon, we haven't taken any electrons from the balloon either. Uh, we've just caused a separation of charge inside the conductors. Okay, now, once we do that, if we come and take the other uh, object away, you'll see that the right-hand sphere has that built-up net negative charge, which spreads out on the conductor, so it's all over the surface of the conductor. Now, we're still holding the balloon here, so we still have the positive charge uh, in this location on, it's a uh, opposites are going to attract, so you're going to have the positive charges here, whereas any uh, balancing negative charges would be on the other side. Uh, now, once we take the balloon away, we are back to the result of a positive charge on the sphere that we were charging. Now, this time, by using conduction, we were able to, or sorry, induction, we were able to take a negative balloon and create a positive charge on our object that we were trying to charge. Now by using a second object, and it could be the two cola cans, two, any two metals or any two conductors that are isolated from other things, so uh, just take a Coke can and put it on top of a cup, a styrofoam cup, and you can create one of these. Uh, but by doing that, uh, we have created a charge of positive opposite, which is always the type of charge you get in charging by induction, and we've created a separate charge, a second charge of negative on another object. Um, that one turns out to be the same. So uh, that's all the basics of charging by induction and grounding. Uh, it's a multi-step process and we're using polarization. We're not transferring the electrons directly from our charged object. That would be charging by conduction.